So what do we mean by democracy? And more importantly, what should we mean? In theory, and we constantly invoke those ideals, we mean and should mean people's power, political equality, and rule not just of and for the people, but by the people. Historically, however, what we mean by democracy uh, has been elected elites power, equality at the voting booth, but nowhere else, and rule of and for the people at best, but never by the people themselves. We mean ruled by professional politicians who also happen to be socioeconomic elites, not ruled by ordinary citizens. The only exception I know of to that rule at the national level is um, Switzerland, which is the only country since ancient Athens to have had the courage to make its citizens direct legislators at the constitutional level, where it only takes around 100,000 signatures in a country of 8 million or so to initiate a constitutional change and to submit it to a referendum. Since the 18th century, what we've meant by democracy in the US, France and elsewhere, where the ideas of those countries have been exported, is representative government with universal suffrage. And what is representative government? According to specialists and historians like Bernard Manin, it's a regime characterized by four principles, periodic uh, elections, independence of representatives from uh, the electorate, freedom of expression of the larger public, and the fact that public decisions are subjected to the trial of public debate. This is a good and decent regime form, very liberal um, and open, characteristic of an open society, but it captures the idea of political equality only in the practice of one person, one vote, and the idea of people's power only in the practice of having citizens choose their rulers. That is undeniably a form of power, but it turns out to be a rather limited one. If we add to that the rise of political parties in the 19th century, which became in charge of identifying political candidates and defining policy platforms, and on the long term have evolved into instruments for elite capture, we have the current system, which is again a far cry from rule by the people. And you see it reflected in our um, dominant definitions of, of democracy, for example, Freedom House. Democracy is a political system, I quote, whose leaders are elected in competitive multi-party and multi-candidate processes in which opposition parties have a legitimate chance of attaining power or participating in power. The definition is strictly about elites competing with each other. The people are sort of uh, expressed in the passive voice as, as those doing the election, doing the ele electing, but not really mentioned anywhere. And somehow this really minimal definition of democracy as competition between elites is supposed to magically produce the common good, that is good governance. The explanation for the magic are multiple. One of them is incentives. You know, you want to win votes, you'd better do what the people want. Um, another one is the median voters theorem in which, you know, a two party system, uh, elites will compete to get the vote of the median voter and therefore move their platforms to that sort of uh, space and rule at the centers, at the center where, where majorities are. The problem is that these models are, I've proven to be wrong in, in empirically, thinking that just because the median voter chooses representatives, uh, he or she also determines policies and laws is just not verified. Too many interfering variables occur uh, in the way policy decisions are, are, are made. And we end up with a disconnect between what people want and what they actually get, what the system gets them. For, for example, a big puzzle in uh, political science for the last 200 years, is why democracies um, are not more massively redistributive uh, than they are if we believe that the median voter is really determinative of, of policies and laws. Indeed, democracies are actually sometimes less redistributive and more plutocratic than authoritarian regimes. So I see it in, in the film of comparative politics where there, there have been some books about this where they're like, how is this possible? Like the predictions are that, you know, democracy should be redistributive. It's not happening. So what's going on? And uh, now we have in, in the last 10 years, uh, um, an, an accumulation of studies that show a disconnect um, between the, the ideal of democracy we operate with and, and its reality. So famous article by Martin Gillens and Benjamin Page from 2014 called testing theories of American politics, where they show that economic elites and organized groups representing business interests have substantial independent impact 
on US government policy, while, again, I quote, mass-based interest groups and average citizens have little or no independent influence. I mean, this is a massive result, it's basically saying majorities are not causal in this country once you control for the preference of the richest 10% and economic groups. In 2018, researchers have replicated that result for Germany, which is surprising because in Germany, uh, you don't have as much money in politics, right? But apparently the problem is not money in politics, the same results obtained. In 2023, just, just a month ago, uh, as I said before, in the British Journal of Political Science, um, a, a group of researchers have, have shown that in 30 countries over 40 years testing 3,000 policy preferences, you can show that the rich ha have a slight edge. So it's a slight edge, it's not all the edge, but we do have a, a plutocratic problem uh, in, in our existing democracies. And what's striking about this study in particular, which is much more, um, you know, uh, wide scale is that it doesn't seem to matter how high the levels of inequality are in a given country, whether or not there are powerful unions, whether political campaigns are privately or publicly financed, it's the same problem everywhere. And so my own, in my own work, I've suggested that the problem is actually elections because that's so one common trait. And that, that we know since the Greeks, at least, that it's always been conceptualized as a mechanism for, um, uh, as an oligarchic selection mechanism, right? And I'm not even going to talk about democracy in emerging uh, uh, economies and transitioning countries where we know the levels of corruption and, and kleptocracy are high. Um, and we just saw you know, another failure in, in Sudan of the electoral model. So I think it's time to ask very seriously, what did we get wrong about our definition of democracy and therefore the measures by which we, you know, the metrics by which, by which we measure it? I think we've been mislabeling the regimes we call democracies um, and periodic elections are not enough uh, to, to, to make for a democracy. We should not have lost the idea of ruled by the people and contented ourselves with the idea of, of and for the people. So does that mean uh, we should return to a form of direct democracy? No, but we should go toward forms of representative democracy where ordinary citizens are doing the representing, not just a fraction of, of um, uh, you know, the population. I call this representing and being represented in turn. And to do that, I think, uh, you know, lotteries, civic lotteries are, are um, a good solution. Ancient democracy knew that, but of course it's not an ideal model because it had all these problems of exclusion of women and slaves and, and foreigners, but we can still learn something from it. Uh, we can learn uh, specifically that the only way to get an actual egalitarian distribution of political power is through lot. And we can have also more uh, direct forms of participation through the use of referenda, specifically citizen initiated referenda. Another thing we should learn from ancient Athens is that democracy is not the same as liberalism and related uh, and other related uh, notions. So liberalism post dates democracy historically, and sometimes liberalism and democracy comes into conflict, right? Um, because liberalism privileges uh, liberty as a value of obligation of any kind. It privileges rights over duties. It privileges the individual over the community. And it's institutionally associated with freedom of conscience, religion, separation of powers, limited government, but also more problematically, counter-majoritarian institutions that are supposed to protect individuals from the tyranny of the majority, but that in fact and in practice, especially in the US, have de facto empowered powerful economic uh, minorities. Um, similarly, and I'll try to be brief here, I think we should be very clear analytically about what we are looking for. Are we looking for the rule of law, which is about a system in which um, you know, uh, le legal decisions are made based on established legal principles and procedures rather than the personal discretion of, of any particular individual? That's a good outcome to look for, but it's not the same as uh, looking for a democratic outcome. Democracy is not the same as good governance. Good governance is an outcome that we all wish for, of course. It's the for the people part of the definition. And I do believe that democracy can produce good governance under certain conditions, but it's important to keep these things separate because sometimes we may want to have democracy at the cost of some what we would consider good outcomes, right? 
And it's a difficult trade-off to, to consider, but I think in some cases we should be willing to consider it. So in my work, I have proposed a model of democracy that I call open democracy, which aims to equalize access to the position of democratic representative. In this model, elections are optional, and the laws are made by a randomly selected assembly of citizens. It's structured by five core principles, participation rights, deliberation, majority rule, democratic representation, and transparency. It's just one model, and there are many, including hybrid ones that just build on existing institutions, because of course my model is very utopian. But the point is that it's really about redefining democracy as a regime in which ordinary citizens, rather than socioeconomic elites, are legislators. Ordinary citizens have a direct say on a range of issues through, for example, referenda, and institutions are generally designed for access and inclusion, which I think ours are not. Uh, and now we'll turn to Claudia so she can give you a sense of what more open democracies, one that would truly empower the citizens would look like in practice. I should also mention that, you know, even though I'm a utopian in some respects, I'm also a practitioner. I was uh, recently involved in the governance of one of those citizens assemblies in France. So I was on the governance committee of the convention on end of life. And it convinced me even more than, 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 than this idea of uh, centering ordinary citizens is a good solution to our current predicament. Thank you.